Hello, hello! In the last video we have talked about peace connections. Today we will start by explaining basic shogi ideas. They are called opening strategies. Let's start by saying shogi has only two strong ranged pieces, which we call big pieces, and those are the bishop and the rook. But it is actually the rook's positioning that's most important. It not only decides the direction of your attack, but also the opening as a whole. And because of that, we will divide our openings into two main ones, one which is called static rook and the other swinging rook, alternatively ranging rook. This is like an older name for the same strategy. So let's remove the bishop and explain how it works. Swinging rook is the opening where you swing your rook to the other side of the board. And then depending on which file it will stop, it will have a different name. So we will have the opposing rook, as it opposes the enemy rook. We will have the third file rook, as it is on the third file from the left. Same logic, fourth file rook. And central rook, because it's in the center of the board. Now static rook is a rook that stays on its original file, hence the name static, but I've seen some divisions into further uh, strategies, not sure if it's called static rook specifically, but you may consider it so. You can consider this right side 4 file rook, as it is on the 4 file from the right side. You have sleeve rook, the attacking... I don't actually know how to explain why is it sleeve rook, but it's sleeve rook. And then this rook can also end up being in this position, we will call floating rook. But I think all of those can be called simply a static rook. There is of course a few other openings that might be a mix of both. For example, trying to fake uh, going for static rook, but then suddenly switching into swinging rook. But I won't get into details of those. Similarly, the rook on the first file is rarely considered a good opening, so I'm gonna omit it as well. Now. As you choose your rook's positioning, your opponent will naturally do the same, and combination of your choices will have three different outcomes, and we will have therefore three different openings. And that is double static rook, when you both, both leave the rook on its original file, swinging rook versus static rook, and double swinging rook, where you both move your rook away. In practical position, it will look something like this. This is gonna be double static rook. We develop our pieces while keeping the rook here. This is gonna be the swinging rook versus static rook, which is also called opposition. Here we have four five rook, static rook, and double swinging rook. Here, this rook moved here, and then ended up on this square floating and this rook went there. In this case we will have third by rook versus opposing rook. Why does combination matter so much? As I said before, the rook will dictate the direction of attack and as a result we would like to create a castle that will be strong from that direction. This is similar to what we talked about in the last video when we talked about the Mino castle. I've drawn those influence lines like this. This kind of indicates to you that this castle will be strong against attacks from the side. It's not gonna be as strong if the attack were to come from the front. But this is not possible here, as the opponent is playing static rook. To make it simple, in case of opposition, we usually both attack from the sides, so we will both have castles strong from the side. This is called horizontal shock. In case of double static or double swinging rook, it's gonna be double static. We will have attack coming from those directions and we will have castles that are stronger in front, but as an effect they will be weaker from the side, right? But again, the attack is coming from the front, so it's less likely it's going to go from the side. In this case, the position is more symmetrical, that's natural for vertical shooting. 
Similar thing will be in double swinging rook, where we will have to prepare against the attack on the front by creating a castle that's strong from those directions. So to not overcomplicate it, I will give you those two examples to reconsider. This Mino castle that's strong from this side. And please compare it to the Yagura castle fortress that's strong from the front. Those are those two first castles, castle shapes that we should remember. Notice that there is a reason why we build them based on what our enemy is playing. In the next video we will go into more details, more examples of castles. I will see you there. Bye bye.